Greetings, this is Duncan Berry. Welcome to Thanks Be to the Sea, an exhibit at the Oregon Coast Aquarium. This exhibit was inspired by an original poem called Thanks Be to the Sea, a declaration of interdependence. Its whole goal was to show the deep interdependence between humans and the oceans. We are completely dependent upon this other 70% of the planet. With every breath we take, with every beat of our heart, and with every thought we think. So let's dive in. The images you're going to see are broken into three different categories. One is the near shore, showing those creatures that inhabit the shallows next to land masses. The second will be midwater along the continental shelf. And lastly, deep water or open sea. The majority of the show is a Japanese folk art called gyotaku, which is fish printing, about a 150-year-old method of taking a direct monoprint from the creature itself. So everything you're seeing here, nature, was the printing press. The first two panels are of the Cascade Head Biosphere Reserve and its marine reserve that's tucked inside it. This is the area that inspired this show, and it's one of 700 from around the world where the Man and Biosphere program of UNESCO has said, here is a unique biological area that also has humans within it. How can we take our place in our natural habitat in a different way, in a more balanced way? So that's what this panel depicts. And then the Marine Reserve was added two years ago, extending this very interesting group of lands that were conserved terrestrially with waters that are also preserved and protected uh, through the Marine Reserve Program of the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife. We begin with a Chinook salmon, 37-pound taiyi. It's caught on the Nehalem River. Next to it is a small juvenile wolf eel found throughout the rocky reaches of the Oregon coast. Then the very, very tip of a giant kelp, book matched to create unique symmetry. Then lingcod, the great fish of, again, the near shore, voracious. We then see a giant Pacific octopus, one of my favorite creatures, the eight-legged. And then a photo of the location where all of these take place. This is Crescent Cove at Westwind, again on the north central coast, uh, where the Cascade Head Marine Reserve begins. It's followed by softshell clams, a large giant kelp again. And then the pectoral of a 17-year-old gray whale, which washed up on the shore at Westwind, as well as its eye. We then move from the near shore into midwater of the continental shelf. That's where we meet the land sea ambassador, a second rendition of a Chinook salmon, or the king, largest of the salmons. We also find the beautiful wing of a glaucous gull, sides striped shrimp in their delicacy, with their long antenna. And one of the workhorses of these depths, the Dungeness crab. And then a photo of uh, one of our vessels that we have at Fish People Seafood, the Sunset Charge, working the Dungeness crab pots on a beautiful day in December. And then one of the amazing creatures of these deeps. They live around the 500 foot level in pretty good numbers, and that's the halibut. And then its speedy cohabitant, the albacore tuna, who travels 5,000 miles to arrive for the upwelling each spring and summer here on the West Coast. One of the fastest creatures in the sea, warm-blooded, needing to move constantly just to keep from freezing. And then we move into the next exhibit hall and we come in contact with the foundation of all life, at least in finny form, and that is a uh, school of herring uh, who have fed on zooplankton, who have fed on phytoplankton, the true foundation. And then a couple images of a baby salmon shark that washed up at Westwind as well, um, beautiful dorsal and then its tail, which looks like a piece of industrial design worthy of a Tesla. 
The photo depicts a big storm rolling across the sea in honor of uh, the giant climate systems that are generated by the sea and that we all experience. And then a link to those same forage fish, a quote about omega-3s and their influence on the development of the human brain in an image, again, with a salmon chasing its prey. And then we get to a place of a special interest, the meso and bathopelagics, which I've grouped together into a group of five images, starting with the viper fish, going to the black sea dragon, the triple wart devil fish, the shimmera, and one of the strangest, most creatively named fish of all, a small but substantial can opener smooth dreamer. The first three have photophores, so their way of attracting prey is not to chase, like the surface fish, but is to wait till their feed and victims come close by. And then finally, as we go down the last tunnel underwater, we come to a large drifting cephalopod again, the giant Pacific octopus, one of the most intelligent, playful, amazing creatures in the sea, to remind us that once again, there are many forms of life, many forms of intelligence on this planet, and that we are just one among many, interdependent on the sea. Thanks be to the sea. <laughs>